G'day, today we're going to have a look at 12 inches of pure power. Welcome to the basement. Back in 2003, if you wanted power and portability, the 12 inch G4 was really a great option for you. Now, why have I got it out on the table next to a duo? Because this really is the spiritual successor, I suppose, to the original PowerBook duo from the early 90s. You see, Apple really wanted to make things smaller, but not lose out on power. Unfortunately, with the Duo, they crammed a pretty powerful chip in there, a 68040, but they just couldn't fit the accessories and the I.O. into the machine and keep the size small like we can do nowadays. So for the Duo to work properly, it has this great big dock on the back, which allows you to, to access all of the I.O., which of course, you know, when you want to be portable, that dock slips off and you've got your portable machine ready to go on the plane or wherever you might be going with it. But it really needed the dock to work properly. With the 12 inch G4, Apple has managed to shrink everything in their bigger laptops and cram it all into this tiny little 12 inch chassis. So it's the first time you get the full feature, everything in the small form factor which makes it a really nifty machine, really handy. And I, I uh, know a few people who had these back in the day. They loved them. They were great for traveling with. They still had all the power you needed and they had all the IO that you might need as well. So a great little laptop from Apple. So going with the 12 inch, really the only thing you miss out on is you just don't quite get the same processor speeds as the bigger models. So this particular form factor, this chassis topped out at 1.5 gigahertz. Whereas the bigger machines, they were able to get up to 1.67 at the end of their run. Now, like I said, this particular machine's from 2003 and it sports the one gigahertz processor. Let's see if it turns on, see if it works, and if it doesn't, see if we can fix it. So the first thing I notice about this machine is it's in great cosmetic condition. It's got the familiar issue with the N. They all do that, I don't know why. I even had a Core 2 Duo model which is you know the next generation same thing happened to the end i'm not sure why it's just the end but anyway uh, so great condition and uh, doesn't really have many dings or scrapes because these were used so much for traveling and chucked in bags and stuff they can suffer quite badly from dings and scrapes but this one looks like it's been taken care of so let's have a look at what the features are on here so the side I.O., this is the first generation that Apple made with side I.O., which is pretty common now for every single laptop. And on this machine, we've got our power connector, we've got modem, we've got network, we've got firewire, two USBs. We've got this, uh, I think that's called like a mini DVI, and that can break out using the right dongle, of course, to composite or S-video or VGA or whatever you need. And we've got audio in, we've got audio out, and a Kensington lock. On the other side, we've got our DV, it's either a DVD driver or a CD driver, can't remember, one of the two. Underneath, we've got a hatch for our RAM, and we also have a release for the battery, a little button so we can see what kind of state the battery is, the charge. Um, obviously, this battery is dead flat. Uh, nice that they had that removable battery, pretty convenient. Wish they'd do it again, but I doubt we'll ever see that again. And of course on the front, just the single button to open the cover. And it's got the nifty magnetic latch. As we bring it closed, you can see that uh, that little catch pulls out. It's pulled out by the magnet and closes the lid and disappears as it opens. I love that design. So inside, it's pretty much our standard laptop layout. Nothing much has changed in the last 20 years. We've got our touchpad and button down here, power button here, keyboard layout. We've got a microphone here. Now I believe the speakers are here. If they're not the speakers, then they'll be vents for the fan. I'm not sure which is which, um, but the speakers obviously have to be somewhere and that's where I figure they'd be. So let's connect some power up and see if it turns on. Okay, connecting power. We should get a light. Oh, straight away we get a green light. Um, and that tells us, oh yes, it's gone to orange. That tells us it's attempting to charge the battery. And if we have a look underneath, 
we can see, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but we've got a little flashy light right there um, saying that it's on one dot of charge and it's flashing, which means it's currently charging. Great, so that seems to be working. Let's hit the power button and see if it comes on. Great, we've got the chime, that's a good sign. I heard the CD drive do its little thing as well. The screen has just lit up. Okay, nothing much seems to be happening. The screen lit up uh, and I was expecting maybe an Apple logo or a, a, a cross sort of logo saying that there's no hard drive, but all I'm getting is just the screen lit up, nothing on there. I'm going to try resetting and seeing if we can get something happening on here. So while I'm waiting for the computer to do something, let's talk about PCBWay. When it comes to doing your next project, you can either do it the wrong way or the PCB way. That's right, PCBWay has everything you need to create your next project. So much more than just PCBs, they also do sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, CNC machining, you name it, they can do it. Everything you need for your next project can be found at PCBWay. So if you need to know which way to go with your next project, it's PCBWay, kind sponsor of today's video. Okay, nothing much is happening. I've tried turning it off and on a few times. I've tried resetting the PRAM. It's still the same, it just turns on, it chimes, and the screen backlight comes on and nothing else comes up on screen. First of all, I just want to pull off the RAM cover because maybe it's a RAM issue. It doesn't hurt to try, and it's the easiest thing to try first. This is our RAM stick, and it is a, a Poultry 256 meg stick. So I'll see if I've got a bigger stick anyway. Uh, and we'll pop that in, turn it on again, and see if that actually makes any difference. Right, that was the original stick I pulled out. Now, in my collection of RAM, I've got a bunch more 256 sticks, and I've got four 512 sticks, one of which is Apple branded. So I'm going to try that first. Righto, nice and easily done. Now, still nothing by the looks of it, just a blank screen with the backlight on. I'm going to try booting it into open firmware mode and just see if we can get the screen displaying anything. Great, yep, so you can see that there. We are in open firmware mode. So I know the screen works, that's a good sign. Just doesn't want to boot something. Right, I didn't get very far with the open firmware, but I do have Apple hardware test. So I'm going to pop that in and we'll see if it will boot off the disk. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Apple hardware test does not support this machine, but it reads disks, so I guess that's a good sign. Let's try another disk. Okay, finally some progress. I've left the computer on for ages, and it finally came to the can't find the folder icon, which indicates to me a failed hard drive. So the next step is to pull it apart and we'll get down to the hard drive. Just had a look at the iFixit guide and <laughs> it's rated as difficult and 40 to 50 minutes to get to the hard drive. So uh, I'll film it, but um, I'll probably just jump through. You don't want to sit here for that long watching me dig into this machine. Okay, we are in, it's only taken around about 20 minutes to get into the machine and we've got the hard drive here. So I'll pop that out and I'll see if I've got a solid state drive I can replace it with. Right, I have one of these fairly standard IDE hard drive adapters that take a MSATA hard drive. So I'll put that together now I have had uh, kind of varying success with these. Um, I've had ones that just stop working randomly. Um, 
and it's kind of annoying like this is so hard to get to I wanted something quite reliable but this is all I've got so I'm going to put it in and hopefully we don't have any issues with this one Before I put all of those screws back in, I'm just going to power it up. I've connected the keyboard. I just want to check that that hard drive is being recognized. Right, so it's booted up and straight away I'm getting the question mark, whereas before it would take uh, five to ten minutes before that would show up. So uh, I think that's a good sign. I think it sees it. I'm going to try and actually install the OS on here again before I do all these screws up, just because I don't want to have to do that several times. <laughs> So I'll try that now. Now the way I like to install my OS on these G4 machines is via USB and um, I don't, I'm not quite sure why. I, I think I like it because it's not designed to be installed from USB and um, we can hack the open firmware to make it boot from this external USB drive and install from here. And I just find it, that's a fun, a fun thing to do. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to let that boot and uh, just install OS 10.4 and do up all the screws and then come back. Okay, everything's back together. Hopefully it's still working. Let's give it some power. Hit the power button. Great, there's the Apple logo. It's much quieter now with the solid state drive in there. Boom, there it is. It sees our 512 meg stick, uh, one gigahertz power PC G4, and we can see our hard drive in there, 60 gigabytes. Bit smaller than the original but of course solid state and you know this machine's never going to really be used for any important work anymore so the size of the hard drive is pretty much irrelevant and so there we have it oh hang on that's not the right machine let me put that over there right so there we oh, hang on that's not right either let me put that over there and so there we have it the 12 inch and the reason I wanted to fix up this 12 inch is so that I could have the trifecta. I've got the 12, the 15, and the 17 all matching. So uh, it's gonna be a great addition to the basement. Well, that was a really good exercise in, uh, well, not frustration, we got it going, but so many screws to take off to get into the innards of this machine. Well, it's done now, working fine. You've been in the basement, have a great day.